This podcast is brought to you in association with From Sweden with Love, one of the oldest fan sites dedicated to the world of 007. Online since 2004 and also on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Why not check them out today? James Bond, 007.se Nobody does it better. (laughs) <laughs> or as they say in Stockholm these days, Ingen gör det bättre. Every film Every stunt. Every story. Ever heard of Evil Can Evil? Welcome. To the YouTube series. I'm John Orty. I'm a stunt historian, author, broadcaster and producer and I'm the man behind behind the stunts on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Welcome to this series of YouTube shorts dedicated to the action and stunts in the James Bond films. My new book, Ever Heard of Evil Knievel, is the definitive guide to everything action-packed in the film franchise. The coordinators, the stories behind these incredible moments, all captured on film. We'll talk through some of those great stunt sequences and a few you may have missed along the way. So buckle up, you could be in for a bumpy ride. The book, podcast and YouTube series are also to be used as educational tools to learn from and to wonder at. Hello there. It's 1969 and Bond is back and he's regenerated as an Aussie with a sensational right hook. Yes, George Lazenby steps into the Scotsman's shoes and delivers a Bond as good as anything before or after. We'll start with the wonderful pre-title sequence, and who better to talk us through that than the man who was on the receiving end of George's right hook. Ladies and gentlemen, Terry Mountain. Leeson myself, we rehearsed for two days. Right. Just George Leach and George was doubling for George Leeson. Mm-hmm. And we got it worked out where um, George was leaning against the, the boat, the little rowing boat. Right. And Peter said, no, George, I want 007 in the boat and laid down. Mm-hmm. So George Lasonby, uh, I did the stick up, get in, lie down, and then he threw the, the rubber anchor at me. Right. And then that's where we started. That's, well, that's what Peter wanted to see. He wanted to see 007 lay down in that boat with the gun pointing at him. Right. Almost giving the impression that, you know, what can he possibly do from here? He's got he's, he's, uh, he's up against it now. He's got a gun pointing at him. Exactly. And this is exactly. it. He's going to get shot. That's right. right. He's going to get shot. Now, that, uh, the, um, the, the fight that, of course, ensued on the beach was... Uh, uh, was was worked out and rehearsed obviously between you and and George Lazenby. There's no there's no doubling it was there just at all. Worked out between George and I in the sea. Yeah, that's what it was. Mm. And we both enjoyed it because George likes a fight. And he, <laughs> yes. uh, well, he does. He was fit. He would have been a very good uh, professional middleweight. He would. Right. Yeah. And 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 what a what, what a tremendous actor to work with. Mm. I mean, he he brought the best out in me. He right. Did. 
and I'm sure that uh, he enjoyed the uh, filming scene. Well, I, it's been said on on a number of occasions that you know there there are a number of actors in the world you can probably count them on one hand, particularly of that era, that threw a really convincing screen punch. Well, George was definitely one of them. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah no, sure. no two ways about that. And I believe that there were additional um, uh, pickup shots that had to be done. Was it a, a day or so later? A day or so, uh, yeah, yeah. He, um, Peter put us on standby, and he, um, we had to be on standby until two o'clock. So right. we got the call, and uh, George Leach and myself, and I drove down to Gincho Beach. Mm-hmm. George had his, uh, he loved that red cougar. He used to drive right. that down to the beach. Yeah, uh-huh. that was his favorite. In fact, it was a toss-up between him or I who drove it. Oh, right. Uh, We never came to blows over it, but uh, it was a toss-up who drove it, the the, the Red Cougar. It was magnificent. I I seem to remember it being um, living in 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 Sweden for a while, in point of fact. That's right. I think it's still there. Right. I think it's still there, yeah. So we got down the beach, and uh, it was one of those grey days, grey, windy days. So Peter said to, to George and I, he said, fellas, I want to get some more stock shots in. I mm-hmm. want to get some more work in. He said, uh, you two go in the sea and show me what you can do and, and, and do a routine for me. Right. George, if you could throw Terry and Terry could throw you and throw some punches and we'll see how we get on. So we got in the sea and it was so windy and cold uh, Peter's cameras and the lights were in the wrong area. We had to stop, and he, he had to bring the cameras and the lights further out because the waves were coming uh, too far in. Right. So uh, Peter pulled George and I out of the out of the sea, and George wasn't very happy about the cold. And he said, "Peter, he said, uh, can't you get two doubles to do this? Two stuntmen." He said, look at Terry's lips. He said, they're blue. <laughs> he said, it's freezing cold in there. He said, I've had enough of this. So Peter said, George, he said, this is the opening scene. He said, you have to do your own stunt work in this. This is important that we get this right. Mm-hmm. So Peter called the prop man over. He ran away and he came back with two bottles of, of the best Portuguese brandy you could buy. <laughs> So Peter, yeah. So Peter took the top off uh, one bottle. He said, "George, that's for you." He said, "Terry, that's for you." He said, "Now come on, have a good pull, have a real good swig, have a real good, a, a real, a real good drink." So George and I looked at each other, and the whole of the set was looking at us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they, they were freezing too. So we had a real good pull. And when I say a drink, I mean a drink out of a bottle. Yes. So uh, Peter said, now, come on, have one more, one more good pull. So one more good pull. He said, okay, okay, you two. He said, now, get in there and do your stuff. Come on, let's go. So George looked at me. He liked a drink, by the way. <laughs> it one more, one more swallow. And we went in the sea, we looked at each other, and then we started throwing punches at each other, and this, that, and the other, throwing punches. Right. We couldn't have been in the sea for more than five, ten minutes. Peter pulled us out. He said, that's fine, chaps. He said, I've got what I wanted to get. Job done. Job done. So we, uh, we went back to the hotel, and, uh, and there we are. So it was, but it took five days to, to do that. Yeah. It just wasn't. It just wasn't a one day shot. No, it was no. Five days. And you can clearly see that you guys really put the work in because it's still. It's still, you know, uh, over fifty years now since it was filmed, and yet yeah. you look at it on screen, and it still looks fresh, exciting, new. You know, it's all of those terrific things. Um, and for you know, you, you you boys really put the work in there, extraordinary. And of course, then then it moves on to uh, uh, Bill Morgan, wasn't it? Bill Morgan joined oh, you down Bill, there. Bill, for... Bill, a terrific stunt man. A very good actor. Yeah, he he was a, a terrific uh, artist. But he died very young. He he must. I think he was 
I think seventy three when he died. Yeah. They're a very good artist. They're yeah. very good. Uh, uh, there wasn't there. Um, well, you probably. I mean, you may know this if you were on the set. But wasn't there another actor playing that his part? Uh, am I right yeah. in saying that? Yeah, yeah. A Greek guy called Takis Emmanuel. Right. He was originally going to play uh, that part. Okay. And we did a couple of rehearsals, and uh, George Leach wasn't very happy with him. Right. And he wasn't very happy doing the, the, the opening scene. So they replaced him. And wh when you see the wedding photograph at the end where we're all dressed and we're clapping. That's right, yes. He's in that shot. Takis is in that, isn't he? <laughs> Takis Emmanuel. Because they filmed that first, I guess. Yes, I see. That's, That's right. Uh, first, yeah, the first, first few days. Yeah. Of and he was very, uh, very friendly with uh, Diane Rigg. Right. Yeah. Well, certainly, it's a it's a, a, a wonderful sequence. That uh, that opening sequence, oh, it's absolutely fantastic. Absolutely super. And 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 John, and for the fans, and for everybody uh, in our business, what a what a bit of good luck for me. Oh, to, good to, heavens! To have had the opportunity to do it. Yes, of course. And now, really, I I consider myself very very lucky. Talk about how good George was in a fight, and remember, he got the role of Bond because of his prowess throwing his fists and was very, very convincing. Poor Yuri Barenko, of course, got his nose busted because of it. But that was the clincher. That was the seal that got him the job in the first place. And so convincing was he that he didn't really need to be doubled during fisticuffs. George Leach was very impressed with him. Of course, all of the stuff we looked at there on the beach, that was him and Terry Mountain doing it for real. He does it again later on in the picture, fighting Erwin Allen, uh, who plays a character called Chi-Chi. don't know whether he's mentioned in the picture as the character or not, but he goes to Tracy's room and he doesn't find her, he finds him. And this is what happens. So... George turns up Tracy. expecting a night of passion and gets this. Tracy? Oof, like a herd of wildebeest. Look at this. The furniture again. I reckon this makes contact. Look. Bang! Oh, I think he's had that. That's fantastic. Um, look at the furniture. Look at him. And the editing here is terrific. John Glenn really does make this, f this fight work. Onto the floor. Over the top as per normal. Bit of padding under that mat, maybe. Crash. More edits. Bang! Two of them grappling together. Um, Dinny Powell was standing by as a double in case there needed to be a double. But look, the edits are such. More editing here. Up, oh, bang, thrum, thrum. There's four edits there in one shot. Look, gun out, smack, crash. It's brilliant. It's archetypal Simmons through the gate to finish off. That's sensational. That's why George is, is Bond. Gabe Crusher, I'll leave you to tidy up. And to end with this week, we need to talk to the man who got to double George during a small part of the skiing sequence uh, while he was out there uh, escaping Blofeld and the goons. It's, of course... Vic Armstrong, and uh, you can read all about it. His book's still available, by the way. And here he is discussing on a Majesty's Secret Service. Yes, again, it was a stroke of fate that I got on a Majesty's Secret Service. They, they'd been shooting in Switzerland a long time before I got called up, and I was down at my father's stables one day. I walked in there to, to ride the horses, and the phone was ringing. There's nobody in the house, so I answered the phone, and somebody said, uh, we're looking for Vic Armstrong. I said, well, that's me. They said, oh, great. Are you free for two weeks starting next week? I went, yeah. So they said, we'll get back to you. And I didn't know what the job, who it was or anything. So eventually they called back that night and said, OK, you're leaving on such and such a flight from Gatwick. And uh, I said, yeah, what, what's the job? They went, Bond, of course. I went, oh, oh <laughs> of okay, course. Cool. And I, <laughs> I flew out of Switzerland. There's a second wave of stuntmen for the attack on the Shiltorn on the right. uh, Pitts Gloria. 
And again, George Leach was there. He was coordinating the show and I started work on it and everything else. And we we're working at altitude, 10, 12,000 feet. So yeah, again, you had to be very, very fit. Mm. Again, my fitness stood me in good stead. And luckily enough, I turned out to be a good double for George Lazenby. So yeah. I, I got the job doubling him on the second unit and uh, doing various fights and things. He had ski doubles and everything. I wish I could say I did the skiing, but no, it was out out of this world skiers were doing the skiing but uh i learned an awful awful lot on that show as well of working on a big action epic abroad and watching how the whole system works you, you crop up leg up for that one. You, you crop up on a number of occasions as you said you you did uh, double george uh well obviously uh, memorably uh just dropping over the edge of the cliff uh, before you uh, returned to kill your own father-in-law, which seems a terrible way to go, unfortunately, but you, you would <laughs> choke him out with a ski. Uh, can we just talk about that for a moment? Because obviously, I mean, you are attached by a wire, uh, which, which, which can be seen, but obviously you must be hugely thankful for the fact that that, that was there. How has that worked? Uh, was that a, a tethered point or was that a, a pull? How, how did that work? Even in those days, it was all a bit Heath Robinson. You know, we had the cable and everything else, and the cable was tied off to a fir tree up the hill, <laughs> right. and we measured it out. And what we couldn't do was, because of, you know, there's no CG in those days. Nowadays, you'd walk all over the snow, and they'd make it look smooth. Yes, of course, yeah. CG, but we couldn't walk over the snow to the edge of the cliff, so we had to just throw the cable out there and guesstimate how long it would be and where it would attach to my ankle, where I would get to. So we did right. all this sort of stuff and uh, measured it out and everything else but the prelude to that was that same cable we'd been they had been using in the bobsleigh run and joe powell another fantastic stuntman who's juggling blofeld yes come down the bobsleigh run look up and there's a fork branch hanging over the bobsleigh which whips him off and that's right and catches him so joe powell did that particular stunt and he had the cable the same cable same one cable, same role that i was using and attached to his back so when he looked up he got snatched out of the bobsleigh run so he didn't actually contact the tree yeah and the cable snapped <laughs> not <laughs> out when he hit the thing so Oops. all the time i'm now measuring out my cable to go over the edge of the cliff all i could see in the back of my mind was joe's cable breaking of oh, course dear. he had a lot more impetus and power and, and speed on his yeah run, absolutely bob run but even so so now I get to do the stunt and I have to run, come from behind camera, run, dive on my belly and slide over the edge of the cliff and stop. And I stopped where I thought I was going to stop. But then suddenly the whole, I shot another three or four feet further down over the edge of the cliff because right. the snow <laughs> that was underneath it was about three foot thick. And that Just, fell off and so obviously <laughs> made my cable three foot longer. So in the Desperately trying, mind, the cable trying to scrabble back down. onto the edge again. Yeah. Fast. If you've enjoyed today's show, and let's be honest, why wouldn't you? Then subscribe. The buttons are down here. Click the subscribe button and enter a world of excitement simply at the touch of a button. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.